Welcome back guys. So I hope all of you will be fine. This is introduction to statistics and data analysis. And today we are going back to the chapter number one. And here we have to solve some questions which are starting from question 1.18. Okay. So the question here is the following scores represent the final examination grades for an elementary statistics course. Okay. So these are basically the scores and the total number of scores we have here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So these are 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59 and 60. So we have 60 uh, data points here and it is not easy for us to write them all here and then add them and it will be somehow hectic for us to add them all. Okay. And uh, finding the sample mean, sample median and sample standard deviation will be harder for us to find here. Okay. So uh, till now we know that what is mean by mean. So we know the formula for mean and that is basically the addition of all the numbers. If we have numbers which are represented with X with an index of I and these are starting from one and moving up to N where N are the total number of elements we have and then dividing them over and it will give me mean uh, similarly after it we can also find out the median of it by first sorting it and then finding the midpoints okay of data points which we have and uh, the standard deviation we have here is that that is basically the square root of variance where the variance is what we know that the variance is basically all the data points minus what mean of it so mean and then squaring it okay and at the end adding them all together from one to n and dividing it over n minus one okay so this is what this is for mean And this is for variance. Okay. And we can very easily find out the standard deviation out of it by taking the square root of it. So that is what we have to find out and we have done it in our previous question. But here as the number of points are greater, so it is more feasible for us to use any programming environment, any packages which we can use to do so. Okay. So therefore in today's lecture, we are not, not going to solve this question by hand, but uh, with the help of uh, the Python, we are going to solve it. Similarly, in part A here, we also have to construct a relative frequency histogram okay and draw an estimate of the gra uh, graph of the distribution and discuss the skewness of the distribution so we also we are also going to discuss that what is mean by the histogram what is basically the estimate of the distribution and what is the skewness okay we are going to talk about them all okay so uh, before going to uh, discuss them all let me remove it first Okay, removing them, we know these formulas and we have them here. Okay, so uh, first of all, let me see that what is a histogram. Histogram. So histogram basically shows me a plot where the relative frequency or the frequency of the occurrence of any data samples is shown. Okay, so suppose I have a data. And in that data, I have some points which are basically 1, 5, 2, 1, 3, 2, 5, 1, uh, 3, 5, and 4. Okay. So here we have how many points do I have here? I have here 1. I can see that these are starting from 1. I have here 5. 5 is here as well. Okay. Do I have here 2? Yes, I have here 2. This is 2. Okay. I have here 3. Uh, let me use this for 3. 
I have here three. And I also have here another data point, which is here four. Okay. So I have different uh, points here. Let me write them all together. So I have here, let me write it with red. I have here one. And the number of times one has occurred here is one, two, three. Okay. So the frequency of one is three. Okay. Similarly, I have here two. And I can very easily see that it has occurred one to two times. Okay. So therefore, two has been occurred how many times? Two times. Okay. Similarly, I have here three. Okay. This is three, one, two. It has been occurred three times. Uh, sorry, two times. So therefore, that is now three. And three has occurred two times. Okay. I have here four as well. So uh, let me write here four. And it has occurred one time. So four. And the occurrence of it has occurred one times. And the last data point I have here is this five. So it has occurred one, two, three. Okay. So five I have and it has occurred three times. Okay. So this is the relative frequency of all the data points which I have here. And in order to plot them all, I have to use a type of the plot which is which is called what? Which is called the histogram. Okay. So let me plot it here in order to show that how it works. So uh, the data the histogram I have here is just like here. Okay, so let me move somehow here. Okay, so at the on the x axis, what I have to do, I have to write all the numbers which I have here. So I will have here uh, one, two, three. Four and five. These are the these are the numbers which are uh, here. We have and here we have one, two. So in order to show that how many times these have been uh, occurred, we have to write here the numbers and here their frequency. That how many times these have occurred. So the first number is one and one has occurred three times. So let me use this red plot for it. So it has occurred what? Three times. So here we have this for this three. Okay. The second number is two. This is two and it has occurred here. Let me plot it here. Okay. So this is two. The third one is three. Sorry, this one. So this one is three, and the frequency of it is also two. So let me draw it here as well. Okay. This is three. The uh, her, uh, fourth one is four. So four is represented with this, and it has occurred one time. So one is here. This is here and the last one is five, which has occurred or the frequency of it is three. Okay. So let me plot it with this yellow color because it is represented with this. So here it will be here. Okay. So that's that is what this is basically called. The histogram a very beautiful plot which shows me the frequency of the occurrence of different elements and the uh, this it is basically what this is also called the distribution or the discrete discrete distribution and that is basically the discrete distribution which is the histogram and in order to see the estimate of the graph of the distribution what do i have to do i have to plot here or i have to use here what this is basically the estimate of this distribution. Okay. So, this is basically the estimate of this distribution and here we have it. 
we will discuss skewness of in our upcoming uh, lecture but skewness is what if a data point has been tilted to some other data samples uh, so that is basically skewed towards that point so suppose if i have here a distribution which is just like here so i can see here very easily see that these data points are more skewed towards this point and that is basically this one and here this is more skewed towards right so this is skewed data similarly if i have another distribution which is just like here okay so we can see here that all the most of the data samples are concentrated over here and this is therefore called the left skewed okay so uh, we have seen that this is the skewness so the in our previous videos we have discussed some moments of distribution okay the first moment we discussed was the mean second moment was the variance third is basically the skewness there is also another uh, moment as well that is called kurtosis but i am not going to discuss it here but what are these moments so in many scenarios calculating the mean is the first and the foremost uh, point of finding the insights of out of a data uh, samples but in most of the scenarios mean doesn't provide me the information which i need so therefore i move towards the variance but uh, variance basically shows me the average dispersion or average spread of a data samples which we i have so uh, in most of the other scenarios it doesn't also provide me the information uh, which i need so therefore we also have to move towards the third moment and that is basically the skewness okay so skewness is the third moment which is related to all the information which the data which should provide me so that's it for today in which we have discussed the concept of the histograms on all the things which we have to do in the python and in the data samples where the number of samples are increased such that these are not handled to be manipulated by hand okay and some computer related programs are required at that point so that's it for today and i will see you in our upcoming video with the python equivalent of the relevant calculation thank you so much and i will see you soon